So what's up guys, Stephen Bogren here from Pro Physique. Today what I want to talk about is does exercising in the heat actually burn more calories? So what's up guys? Now, this is going to be a little bit dorkier of a video. It might be a little bit more science-y. Um, but I think it's something that's important to talk about because it was definitely something that I've had brought up with people mentioning how they feel about exercising in the heat and, you know, just the idea that it burns more calories. So, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about your exercise environment and how that can determine maybe if you burn more calories less calories or it really doesn't even matter. So I think that the first thing that we need to talk about is just the rule of thermodynamics, right? And this is a very simple rule that energy, it's not created, it's not destroyed, it's just moved from one place to another, right? So if we are, um, you know, doing something to where we're bringing in heat, we're storing energy. If we're doing something to where we're giving off heat, you know, we're expelling energy, right? So heat is energy essentially. That's how we are going to sort of define the usage of energy. And so the way that they track that is by calorimetry, calorimetry, or a bomb calorimeter. Essentially what they do is they put something inside a box or a room, depending, um, and most of the time they just burn it. Right? So if you take an apple, you put it in a box, you burn the shit out of it. How much heat does it give off? That's how much energy we have. Now with people, they put them in the room and they track how much heat your body gives off. They don't burn you. Um, but that's how we measure energy expenditure. Direct, right? The other ways that we can do that is by, you know, saying, okay, well, we can do calculations. Um, we can look at how much oxygen you are uh, putting out in terms of respiration and breathing, those sorts of things, right? So we have to have at least one of these measures in order to be able to measure or estimate your calorie expenditure, okay? Most of the time, what you're going to see is the masks, and that's essentially, it's looking at how much oxygen you're utilizing, how much CO2 you're breathing out versus how much oxygen you're breathing in, but versus how much is in the air and a whole bunch of other stuff. So very interesting stuff, a lot of calculations, a lot of data goes into it, and the machines are pretty darn expensive. I think the, the cheapest ones I've seen are twenty to $30,000. So um, it's not going to be a super cost-effective thing to find out. And if you've had your BMR tested, you probably understand that. However, today what are we talking about? We're talking about is it better to work out like in the hot, in the cold, in the normal temperature? Well, let's, let's sort of talk about that, right? So the first and foremost thing is everybody, a lot of people think that exercising in the heat burns more calories. Um, I think that what this has a lot to do with is the fact that you're sweating more. So if you don't do a good job rehydrating, you can become dehydrated. Therefore, we see weight loss being exacerbated, right? Um, so we see extra weight loss due to dehydration, not necessarily fat loss, um, and we associate that with fat loss. The truth of the matter is, is that it doesn't take your body a whole lot of energy to sweat, right? Sweating is kind of a natural thing. Your body's kind of always doing it. It's always what we call thermoregulate or regulating the, its own internal temperature. Uh, things by like sweating, sending blood to the capillaries, you know, so that uh, more heat dissipates off to the skin. Those sorts of things. So since your body's always doing that, it doesn't really take much more energy for it to continue to do that or to, to ramp it up a little bit when it's hot out. However, you do have a lot of other things to worry about with heat stress and dehydration, as well as if you're not getting enough salts and things like sodium, potassium, right? So if you don't have enough electrolytes, right? We're not replenishing those. So exercising in the heat, whereas if you are an athlete, it might be very necessary to do, um, it is not going to burn extra calories. However, 
if we look at energy expenditure in different types of climates, um, we don't see any difference between heat and normal climates, right? It's like, this is comfortable, this is hot as hell. Energy expenditure is pretty much the same. I'm going to link the study that shows this um, underneath as well. Uh, so we don't see a big difference between those two. What about cold environments? So in cold environments, you absolutely burn more calories at the very least at rest. Now, again, why is this? Because we have to burn stored energy, like we have to release heat to keep body temperature up, right? Um, this requires that we're breaking down fast, we're breaking down carbs, we're doing things to release energy and create heat. So that means moving around, anything, any kind of movement, this, that, running, whatever. So we see higher calorie expenditure in the cold. Does that necessarily mean that you are going to burn more calories exercising in the cold? Now I think this is a fun question. If we think about it in terms of the physiology of the human body, at rest, we are most certainly going to burn more calories in the cold. Absolutely. But are we necessarily going to burn more calories in the cold if we're up and moving? If we're already doing the work, right? We're doing something to create body heat. We're going to have to dissipate that extra heat for the energy that we're expending to, to make movement, right? Now, I would say the research would probably say yes, absolutely. We burn more calories. Is it something that is going to be significant enough to matter? At that point, I think that's where the question lies. Due to the fact that if you're exercising in the cold, you may be at a higher risk for injury if you don't do a proper job warming up and making sure that you're staying warm and loose, right? That is going to be the big kicker. So. Again, if you are an athlete, you don't have a lot of control over the environments in which you're going to have to exercise. So if you have to exercise in the cold, it's important that you start being very smart and aware of making sure that you're taking plenty of time to warm up properly and do all the things to make sure that you are preventing injury. Now, if you have to exercise in the heat, like any kind of outdoor athletes here in Florida, it is very important that you are very aware of your hydration, very aware of your electrolyte intake. Um, and just aware of heat stress and heat stroke symptoms. It is very big. Um, it is something that your coaches need to be aware of and it has become a very um, important factor as we've seen a lot of kids suffering from things like heat stroke uh, and heat exhaustion down here in Florida. So what I would tell you is the main caveat is this. If you have to be an outdoor athlete, you are absolutely going to have to exercise out in those climates and it is important that you acclimate to them. If you are a physique athlete or you are just trying to improve your body composition, it is not going to matter as much. You can go to the gym, exercise in the nice AC, and just do your thing, right? It's more, at this point, it's more about consistency than it is about what temperature environment that you are exercising in, okay? So don't make too much out of it. Don't make a, a mountain out of a molehill. Exercise in an environment that is going to keep you exercising and enjoying the exercise. That should be the main take home. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Until next time, have a good one.